talk. I was going to take the four top um, uh, DXP vendors and compare all their capabilities across all their products. Um, so Sitecore, Optimizely, Adobe, and Acquia are kind of the four biggest names in um, the composable DXP world. And I had grand ambitions to you know, uh, compare everything they do. And you know what? Everybody says they do everything. And I probably spent three days doing research. And you know what? I can't tell the difference between them. Honest to God, I can't. So I think of our poor uh, clients trying to figure out what product to use for what. And it's no wonder they're yanking their hair out and crying in their coffee and don't know what to do and come to us. So what I'm gonna do is talk about um, kind of the company structures of the four. Um, we're gonna talk about um, the Gartner qualitative comparisons and reviews, strengths and cautions, um, information I got from their company websites and then some results from Forrester. Um, because it is almost impossible to um, compare feature for feature what they all do because everybody says they do everything. So I just, I, I have so much um, sympathy for our clients trying to make these decisions and it makes it all that more important for us to be really good consultants. And I'm gonna kind of um, circle back to that at the end. So we're gonna talk with, start with Sitecore. Um, kind of our baby. I think if we're on this call, we have a lot of loyalty to this um, platform and this company that we've all invested a lot of time and effort and our professional emotion in. Um, they were founded in 1998. They have about 2,200 employees, roughly 200 partners, about 637 in revenue. Um, the highest average review on Gartner Peer Insights of the four. Um, and I took a quote from CX Today for each of these, which I, I think is a nice way to kind of encapsulate um, a point of view about each of these platforms. So making several SaaS acquisitions that enhance customer data management, mar market resource management, and personalization strategies, Sitecore is piecing together an exciting vision, harnessing new AI and data functionalities that provide our caters for a range of CX-centric scenarios and B2B use cases. Um, Gartner also highlights its global network of alliances as a particular positive offering significant support to clients embarking on a digital transformation journey. So that sounds awfully good. And so when we look at um, the Sitecore kind of constellation of products that um, have hit the market in the last year, 18 months, um, they're categorized with three different clouds. Engagement cloud has personalized send in CDP, Commerce Cloud has Discover and Order Cloud, and Content Cloud is Search, Content Hub One, XM Cloud, Content Hub Operations, and Content Hub Dam. And like I preach on LinkedIn all the time, XM and XP are not dead. So don't forget that we have those two platforms as well that a lot of our clients are going to be on for a long time. Um, you know, it's a big lift to go from one of those platforms to XM Cloud. So we still have to manage and support and strategize for XM and XM and XP as well. So from Gartner, um, Gartner puts out um, a report with all kinds of information and kind of qualitative comparisons of different um, platforms with a lot of like quotes and reviews from clients and that sort of thing. Um, this is from um, the last quarter of 2021, which is the last time this has been put out. And honestly, the strengths is really good. It's, it's kind of a weird, um, the strengths and cautions are really kind of the same thing. Sitecore has grown a lot and has made a lot of acquisitions and has added a lot of products to its portfolio. And with that comes some growing pains and some uncertainty and some um, trepidation sometimes in the market. And so Gartner's strengths and cautions um, really express that, I think, pretty succinctly. It's nothing that none of us don't know or we don't hear, we don't um, you know, hear from our clients. So um, as Sitecore is kind of reorganizing and reestablishing this new way of doing business, please keep in mind, this is from a couple of years ago and there's been a lot of evolution and a lot of, um, I think, kind of stabilizing forces since then. 
Um, so we'll talk about Optimizely next, um, probably the closest, um, I'd say, competitor to Sitecore. Um, it was founded in 2010, has roughly half the number of employees, um, maybe a third of the revenue that um, Sitecore does. And from CX Today, having acquired Zio, I, I should have looked up how to pronounce this first, this company with a Z in 2021, Optimizely expanded its capability to map customer journeys uncover critical customer insights and deliver personalized targeted digital experiences. Um, this is a positive step forward for the brand while applauding its digital experience optimization and multivariate testing approach. And so this is kind of how they lay out their products kind of in these three categories. They have orchestrate, monetize, and experiment. And then within each of those, there's a lot of different individual products and platforms that you can kind of piece together. Um, and it's all kind of held together with the Optimizely data platform at Marketplace and then connected platforms. Um, so again, from Gartner, the strengths offers a lot of digital capabilities that um, have a kind of a simpler approach sometimes than Sitecore does. It's typically a little bit easier for content authors and marketers to learn and manage the, the information architecture and the content um, authorship. It's simple, scalable, modular, and transparent. Um, I think that their pricing is a little bit easier to understand. And um, it's headless along with um, basically all of the offerings right now. Everybody is going headless um, as an option. Um, the caution is um, lack of unified analytics which is kind of a miss. They lean really heavily on Google Analytics and um, a lot of their products remain available standalone, but the messaging is a little bit confusing. What do you need to buy together? What comes as a package? That sort of thing. Um, now Adobe, kind of the big whale. Adobe is kind of hard to analyze because it's part of such a big company. So they're um, Adobe Experience Manager, kind of their website part of the business is really hard to like get those numbers out of the big Adobe um, metrics. So I don't know, they have like 29,000 employees. I don't know how many of those are, um, you know, with AEM, their revenue is enormous, you know, a billion or so dollars a year. Um, they're a little bit lower than um, Sitecore on the average peer insights from um, Gartner and they have about six products, um, not including all of the actual Adobe products you know, the, all the integrations, that sort of thing. This is just for their website support. Um, it provides a proven mature DXP solution, market analysis, also a wide, wide array of functionalities, including content management, analytics, personalization features. It also offers an ecosystem of creative marketing and advertising agencies, which supports effort to enhance online customer journeys. So all of those kind of adjacent Adobe products are really obviously easy to use with Adobe Experience Manager and really beefs up their portfolio. So this is kind of an overlook of their Experience Cloud products. Um, Adobe Experience Manager is their actual CMS. And then you can see kind of the adjacent platforms that um, are more composable in nature that go along with it. You have Analytics, Audience Manager, Adobe Targets, that sort of thing. Um, Adobe's hard to beat right now. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. Um, it's a really recognizable brand name. Even if you have never touched website stuff, you've probably heard of the, the name Adobe. You know, we've all made a PDF, we've all had DocuSign, that kind of thing. Um, it also has a HIPAA ready Adobe Experience Cloud for healthcare, which I think is something that Sitecore is gonna to have to chase and catch up with. I know that there's a lot of, um, HIPAA concerns right now with CDP and personalized and the need for an intermediary of BAA to, um, to kind of handle the anonymization of, of patient data. So um, the last I heard that's on the roadmap for maybe January-ish, but um, I really hope that Sitecore moves that up because um, we've got healthcare clients ready and waiting to um, utilize CDP and personalize and we just can't do it quite yet. So. Um, some of the cautions, it's a premium, premium priced product 
portfolio. And I'll talk about this a little bit later. It is a spendy, spendy product. And um, for really huge companies that have that to invest, it's maybe worth that. Um, but it has a really steep learning curve as well, as kind of Sitecore does as well, to be perfectly honest. But um, it's not as simple um, uh, uh, platform to learn and implement. All right, and then we'll talk about Acquia, which um, is kind of Drupal. They acquired Drupal, so they're kind of one and the same, but not really, and that's kind of confusing, and we'll talk about that as well. They've been around since 2007, have roughly 1,200 employees, 720 partners, around 200 million in revenue, a um, little bit lower than Sitecore on the Gartner Peer Insights, and they've got about 11 products. Um, so it provides an experience employee experience solution to enhance the experience of people who create and manage digital customer journeys, um, which is a differentiator, but it also has open source capacity and low to no code experience builder site studio, which we'll talk about just a little bit too. I'm doing a bad. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to try and watch uh, chat at the same time. Um, I believe, yeah, I believe that kind of the pricing would be um, Adobe, Sitecore, Optimizely, probably uh, Acquia, kind of at the bottom of that. Sorry, I'll try and keep an eye on, on chat. So this is what their product suite looks like. Acquia is an open DXP, so their code source is not proprietary, for better or worse. Um, doesn't necessarily reduce the overall cost of the product, um, but they do have a lot of um, products that sound kind of like Sitecore's, they have something called Content Hub, which is obviously their dam. Um, they've got some personalization, Site Studio. Um, they've got um, a dam and a CDP, which is pretty um, uh, right neck and neck with, with Sitecore's. So um, this uh, Site Factory is really cool. It allows um, organizations to easily coordinate and scale deployment across a network of sites and clone templated sites, um, build, launch, and maintain sites from a single code base. Um, uh, it, they've worked with customer data management and journey mapping enhanced with machine learning and available with a low code visual designer UI. And um, it's also, this is what I think is kind of interesting. They're positioning support for intranet and employee portal use cases, which kind of used to be the domain of SharePoint for a long time. So it's interesting that Acquia is kind of tiptoeing into that, um, that land. So some of the cautions, um, open source um, has pluses and minuses with Drupal and the commercial Drupal cloud is, gets kind of confusing. Um, they're not quite as composable as some of the other um, platforms on here, and um, their headless capabilities remain less proven in the market. So um, I kind of I went and found some kind of just nuts and bolts about the different platforms. Um, Sitecore, um, you could do MVC or headless. It's API um, based. It has kind of three flavors, let's say, of CMS. We still have XM and XP, and now we're moving to XM Cloud. Very scalable content management. Um, the one kind of plus of Sitecore that I read over and over and over is you can make it do literally anything if you have a dev team that's talented enough and you have the time and budget to do it. So um, the customizability is pretty much infinite. infinite. Um, it's highly secure and we have a really good network of, of partners to work with. Um, with Optimizely, a lot of it is the same. The interface for content authoring and management is, and even personalization is a little bit easier to manage. It's a little bit more intuitive for marketing teams. Um, it's extendable and customizable. Um, it doesn't have a lot of great um, documentation and training from what I understand. Um, that's something that um, they could do better. And if you're working with a large database, um, there can be some page load speed um, lag and slow response. Um, with Adobe Headless API first architecture, it uses the Apache Sling web framework. I have no idea what that is. Um, uses the Java content repository. Um, there's a lot of overlapping capabilities with a lot of its products, which makes it confusing for 
um, customers to figure out what they need and what they use and what they're paying double for because they didn't need two things. And it has a very high price tag for licensing and implementation. Ah, so um, Acquia, like I said, um, they acquired Drupal and there's some confusion. I'm still not even entirely sure like what is the Acquia CMS and Drupal? Are they exactly the same thing? Um, they have some slower performance and unreliable experience if you're using too many modules. The personalization is kind of limited. There's a steep learning curve for content authors. It's difficult to customize and there are some security vulnerabilities due to the open source um, nature of the, of the source code. So um, another place I went for information um, is Forrester Research puts out this Forrester wave um, every couple years, I believe. This is the most recent one that we have, and it's from Q3 of 2021. So please keep in mind that a lot of what's happened in the last two years. We have XM Cloud, we have the addition of all of these new um, products and platforms from Sitecore. So I'm really looking forward to an update on this to see how some of these um, scores I would hope improve for Sitecore. So um, you'll see kind of across the board, we're not scoring great on this Forrester report, but again, this was before all this acquisition and um, before Sitecore made its true move to um, headless and compos composable architecture. So you'll see here, um, Optimizely and Adobe are doing really well on the experience management and delivery um, with platform services, this one kind of surprised me. We're at the bottom. And again, I hope that this will improve once Forrester is able to evaluate all the new products and platforms that Sitecore has put out. For infrastructure services, again, um, total score is 13. Um, it really surprises me because I think that Sitecore does a really good job with developer tools, support, um, the community training. Like I never feel like we're without resources. So I would kind of disagree with that one. Um, Goals-based access management, like how do you get a five if we don't have a five? Like I don't know what on earth we could do better um, or Sitecore could do better to get that score up. So. Um, and platform certifications. Um, I will say that with the certifications, of course, you know, development is the first priority and you have to have technical certifications for a lot of the different um, platforms and products. But as a strategist, I really struggle because there aren't a lot of um, like strategy and marketing focused um, learning and curriculum out there. And there isn't a lot of um, certifications that are particularly applicable to marketers and strategists. Um, I took the Content Hub Administrator exam last summer and I failed it spectacularly three times and I haven't taken it since because it's, it's, it's a difficult test, but it's really more than a marketer needs to know. So um, I would hope, and I've, I've made the suggestion to Sitecore that perhaps um, starting some some learning kind of trails, if you will, for marketers, for salespeople. I just had a project manager today ask me if there's project manager focused, um, uh, you know, education or tutorials or anything. And I'm like, well, I can send you some Sitecore 101 stuff, but there just really isn't anything specific to project managers. And we all know that having a project manager with some Sitecore experience and expertise under their belt just makes everything go better. Um, and then this, again, take with a huge grain of salt, because this was put out before last symposium, before we knew a lot about XM Cloud, before a lot of these um, new products were um, kind of tested and, you know, showed performance and were getting, um, you know, thorough reviews. So take this with a great big grain of salt. Um, I, I think that uh, Sitecore in the next roundabout will probably do better with this. And then market presence, we do pretty well. Um, our average size deal is pretty high. So, you know, we're making money on the deals that we have, um, but our overall customer count is, you know, kind of right in the middle. So that's something we can do better on. So with all that said, if our clients are out trying to find information, and they're finding this information, Sitecore might be a hard sell. So what do we do? Sitecore has some really good um, 
articles on its knowledge base on like comparing the two. So there's a Sitecore versus Optimizely, Sitecore versus Acquia versus Adobe. And I really encourage you to go and they're in this PowerPoint, I'll send it to everybody. Um, go read those articles, but it's a really good um, kind of conversational way of comparing the two. And it's not really apples to apples. It's very much, it's a little more qualitative than that, but um, it's a really good place to go bookmark. And so when you start having these, these conversations, you know, kind of what the um, kind of the soft underbelly of some of these other um, platforms might be. Um, with Optimizely, um, analytics is really lacking. Um, I think that's one thing that Sitecore does particularly well, especially if you're on XP. Um, playing with CDP and personalized is really, really fun and getting in there in their CDP and getting all those analytics. Um, I think that's something that Sitecore does really well. If companies take the time to invest in um, you know, if you're on XP, you need to do up all your marketing definitions and be kind of thoughtful about setting it up. It's not, you know, you plug it in and it's going out of the box. You need to put some time and work into it. Um, Optimizely has really leaned on Google Analytics for a long time. And now with the change to GA4, you know, um, I, I'm sure that there's been a lot of work being done to transfer those clients over. Um, they also have five tiers of um, their partner program. <laughs> and this is this is kind of funny. So their like top tier has seven partners. Four of them are in the Nordics, and three are in the U.S. Can you imagine if Sitecore only had three platinum partners? What the demand would be, and how hard it would be to like get on the dance card of one of the partners. Um, so Sitecore has um, upwards of 500 partners and 20,000 Sitecore certified developers. So we've just got more people, more companies, more um, individuals ready to um, help with those implementations. With Adobe, again, the cost difference is substantial. Um, Adobe's Each of Adobe's 100 biggest clients pay just shy of $5 million annually for experienced cloud products. From what I understand, that's just licensing. That's not us, that's not you and me, that's not ongoing development time and strategy and that sort of thing. That's just keeping that license. Um, and the implementation for AEM costs typically four to eight times the licensing fee versus um, two to five times licensing for Sitecore. So they are paying a lot for that product and you have to wonder if it's, if it's worth the trade-off. Um, and then the other thing that's really different about Adobe, and I've kind of heard people talk about this the last couple of years, is, is their selling process, um, and not necessarily between the, you know, Adobe and the client, but how their partner ecosystem works and how competitive it really is, and how in the end, Adobe ends up um, competing with their own partners for business, which isn't great. And their partner structure is commission-based. So, um, they're incentivized to sell you a much higher price tag project than, um, you know, I think I would hope a Sitecore um, uh, partner would be. And then Acquia, um, so this is really interesting. So they use open source software and I'm not a developer, so I'm not gonna know all the um, pros and cons of that. But from what I understand is in the end, it rarely ends up saving clients very much money um, because there's just so much work that needs to be done. And there's um, some really legitimate security questions with that. Um, a lot of the biggest security breaches in the last few years have been um, through open source software. So that's something to um, keep in mind. And then their headless architecture presents some technical challenges. Um, and then um, it's really, their personalization has limited capabilities unless you pay extra for those um, uh, capabilities. So all this to say, <laughs> what do we do? When our clients are out there and this is the information that they can find, you know, and there's all kinds of tables and charts and graphs um, kind of comparing all these together, how do you overcome that? Um, 
I am of the mindset that um, I want to be a good consultant first. I don't want to just sell a company something with a big price tag if it's not the right thing for them, if it's more than they need. So I think this is where we as practitioners, whether that's developers or sellers or strategists, we need to be a conscientious consultant. So ask questions, ask lots and lots and lots of questions. And I know everybody's trying to save money and do your discovery workshops virtual. And I promise you, it will always be a better experience if you've got a bunch of people sitting around a conference room table for a few hours with marker boards and post-its and Sharpies and figuring stuff out together and asking a lot of questions and follow-up questions. Make sure those questions are from the perspective of your development team. You know, you want a technical architecture and some processes that are, are gonna work well, but look, through, look at the project through the lens of their marketing team. What can they handle? What, do, what are they mature enough to take on? And then look at things through the lens of their users, their customers, their clients. You know, how can we make a better experience for them? Um, make good use of your clients' resources or your prospects' resources. Don't sell them more than what they need. And I think that's been, um, I think the best part of working in a composable DXP universe. Um, we had a client about a year and a half ago. Um, we were gonna rebuild their website on site for, for the first time it was coming from a different CMS. And we were kind of evaluating what they wanted to do and what they wanted to need, what they, what they needed. And um, they had an existing CDP and I can't remember the name of it, forgive me. But because they didn't need to buy the site for CDP, they just bought personalized and we got them to work together. Then they were able to buy Content Hub. Um, and that was a much better use of their money than buying the Sitecore CDP when they already had one. So we're already seeing a lot of um, use cases where, you know, um, you know, maybe they have an email provider that works just fine. Great, keep using it. Um, if they have, um, you know, a, a, a personalization. Maybe they're using Opti for personalization, but they, but it, you know, the rest of their stack isn't meeting their needs. That's where Sitecore can plug in and kind of fill those gaps. So identify their pain points, their must-haves, their wish list. And this is the biggest question I always ask: is what makes you hate your job? Whether it's a developer or you know their business team or their marketing team, what is the one thing that you spend way too much time on? that makes you like bang your head against the wall. And if that's something that we can solve, that is worth um, the investment just as much as revenue and return on investment and website performance. If we can eliminate the hassles and the frustrations of a marketing and development team so they can spend more time on what's fun, what's useful, what's valuable, what moves the needle for their company, then that's a good decision too. And then what makes it hard for your clients, customers to do business with them? You know, is their information architecture across a bunch of different websites incompatible? Is it hard for, um, you know, their users to just complete a simple task? What is it that drives their, um, their patients, their customers crazy about their digital experience? And then what parts of Sitecore or a different um, composable DXP will solve for those? So, um, I want to get your guys's input too. Um, you know, have you been having these conversations? Are they difficult? Are they? Um, where are you guys getting your information on? You know, what what the competition is doing? Because it's really really hard to find. I'll be honest. Um, a lot of the comparisons that I found were really qualitative, based on reviews and that sort of thing, not necessarily. Um, does this platform do A, B, and C, X, Y, and Z? That's really hard to find because like I said, every company makes it sound like they do everything. So I don't know, I'd like to hear from the other folks on this call what your experience has been.